perimenopause rage. Can hormones really make you that angry? Okay, so many women have experienced mood shifts that co-occur with their menstrual cycle. And those that care about them may have witnessed that their loved ones were a bit off during certain times of the month. So you won't be surprised when I tell you that sex hormones do have a powerful influence on the brain. But did you know that hormonal changes really can cause mood shifts so severe that one can experience extreme irritability, anger, or rage? Let's talk about that in this video. And I want to discuss what perimenopause rage is, how it could happen, and why other emotional issues could occur with the changes in a woman's hormonal cycle. I'm Dr. Sarah, and any of the information that I discuss in this video will be available as well in an accompanying article with the complete references, and you'll be able to click that link in the video description. And also, if you like what you are hearing, please make sure to support this channel by liking and commenting. All right, let's get into this. So how can hormones affect the mind and body that much? Well, they are very, very powerful in very, very small amounts. And that's why they're so tightly regulated throughout the body. Now I talked about this before in all of the feedback loops that control hormone regulation in my last video, which will again be available in the video description link. But basically a wide overview is that hormones have a wide reaching effect on the mind and body. And they intricately communicate with various different organs there are actually hormone receptors all throughout our body, and they cause a wide array of effects. They are tightly regulated, and they have various, various influencers on them. So different aspects of lifestyle, of our environment, and of our genetics impact hormone output. They also affect our brain signaling, our brain processing patterns, specifically estrogen, progesterone, thyroid, testosterone, and oxytocin have been linked to different psychological mood disorders related to how they interact with our brain biochemistry. And they can't just be replaced by pills and lotions because we have all of these different interfering factors. So if we just go by the measurement on a lab and try to kind of fill that bucket, what's going to happen is all of these other interfering factors are going to come in and kind of make that bucket go down or up again. So we really have to make sure that the foundations of health are intact whenever we are adjusting hormones or looking at hormone balance. And that can be done using a naturopathic and functional medicine approach. Again, if you want more information, that would be on the last video on those specific aspects. So make sure you check those out if you missed it. And now let's go on to what happens with perimenopause rage. First, let's talk about the changing hormonal landscape of perimenopause. So first of all, people experience symptoms when they go through different ups and downs in their hormones, these hormonal fluctuations. In fact, as many as 90% of women experience unpleasant symptoms before their periods. And this is called premenstrual syndrome symptom. And many women who go through perimenopause that have these various symptoms likely would have had PMS as well. So unfortunately, that those negative symptoms occur throughout the lifespan and about their hormonal landscape. Now, perimenopause is defined as a period between the onset of irregular menstrual cycles and the last menstrual period, which is termed menopause. That's when a full year has gone by and the woman has stopped her menstrual cycle and she's technically no longer fertile. It's marked again by these fluctuations in reproductive hormones, and it can lead to these different physical, emotional, and even social changes for women. It's when the ovaries gradually produce less estrogen, and what happens is this throws the hormones out of whack. So common symptoms that many people are familiar with are hot flashes, night sweats, night sweats and mood changes. And literature does suggest that perimenopause actually has the highest risk for psychological disorders in women compared to pre and post menopause. One of the most common symptoms as far as mood is irritability. 
So why would these emotional outbursts occur in menopause? I kind of just answered that question, right? Mostly it's hormonal. There's also other factors at play, such as inflammation, structural brain changes, lifestyle factors, predisposing conditions, and socioeconomic factors. But the main factor in most literature that is agreed upon is these hormonal changes, and they're the main driver. So what I did in the article is I went through specifically how hormone changes in estrogen and progesterone and perimenopause can impact mood. Specifically, estrogen has all of these different impacts on the brain. It affects brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It impacts serotonin, which I talked about in the last video. It also has an effect on other neurotransmitters and specifically on memory centers in different regions of the brain. Now, the estrogen actually does cause brain structural changes. There's receptors in the brain for estrogen. And estrogen can impact various regions in the brain, including the hypothalamus, which is a very important organ for kind of a lot of regulatory things that go on in our body that we don't really think about. And one of them is temperature control. So imagine if the estrogen is going up and down and up and down and hitting that hypothalamus and it's not very balanced. Hence, that could be responsible for some of the hot flashes that women experience. And that doesn't help with mood for women going through it. it Estrogen is also on the brain. There's receptors in the brain stem, which impacts sleep and wake cycles. So women in perimenopause might have a problem with sleep, which also does not help with mood. And then there's also receptors or there's an impact on the amygdala. And that is the emotional and memory center of the brain. And that affects both mood and cognitive functions. And then there's different other symptoms that can occur with these fluctuations in menopause that might make a woman, or sorry, in hormones that might make a woman more aware that she might be experiencing perimenopause and her mood symptoms could be attached to her hormones, right? It might not necessarily be a psychological basis or just an emotional basis. We need to look at the biology. And these different symptoms include things such as vaginal dryness, those hot flashes I just discussed, night sweats, uterine problems, those sleep issues, and the memory and mood issues. So if all of that is combining, or you know, more than two or three, you might want to look at hormonal issues as, a, as an underlying factor. And there are different functional lab tests that can help get to the root cause of this. So for you doctors out there and you uh, patients who haven't gotten your answers, there are different blood panels and different salivary panels that doctors can run as well as urinary panels for hormones. They can do thyroid panels. They can measure neurotransmitters to look at the serotonin, to look at that GABA, which is impacted by progesterone, which is your kind of anti-anxiety neurotransmitter. And they can assess gut function because our gut actually helps produce neurotransmitters. And they could, those little microbes produce compounds that communicate to our brain via this highway pathway of a very important nerve called the vagal nerve. And it's a bi-directional communication. So a doctor may choose to look at all of this or take a really good health history and or both preferably have some sort of measurement for hormones. And then there's different treatment options that can be done. So a lot of times people think of conventional hormone replacement therapy. And I kind of discussed and touched upon how it's so important to have the lifestyle factors dialed in first and look at all of the different interfering factors. Otherwise, you're just chasing symptoms numbers, chasing symptoms and numbers on a lab value and you're not addressing the underlying cause of the hormonal imbalances and it probably won't have lasting and long-term effects. There's also various mind-body therapies that can help calm the mind-body and help with mood and hormones. There's aromatherapy and essential oils. There's different herbs, different nutritional aspects, such as eating whole foods that nourish the brain, um, veggies and fruits are very good for brain health. And so is making sure you get adequate 
protein to provide yourself with the nutri nutrients that you need and proteins to build those neurotransmitters and help with brain function. We also want to think of it healthy fats as the brain is in, um, mostly made of fat and that's how our body needs um, those signals, those neural signals to be, let's say, well lubed with the fat. So um, taking in healthy omega-3s can be very helpful as well as also for hormones because we need healthy fats to balance our hormones. So some of um, the interventions that are mentioned in the article also include Chinese herbals, which actually my editor put in. She is actually very good with Chinese herbs and they do have different impacts on various aspects of hormonal health and even function of the brain. And then there's one thing I didn't mention in the article that I did mention in my article review of the article that I wrote on perimenopause rage, which is prairie morifica, which I have found helpful for women with lowered estrogen. And this really needs any of these interventions, herbs, um, anything that you're doing to impact hormones really should be monitored, especially if it impacts estrogen because of the effect of estrogen on the uterine and endometrial lining for a woman as well as the breasts. So those should be monitored if you're going to play around with estrogen levels by a physician um, and your, and your OBGYN. Okay, so that being said, I just want to kind of highlight a little bit about one of my favorite hacks for hormonal health, and you probably know what it is if you follow me for any time at all, and that is essential oils. Because to me, these aromatic volatiles are the most powerful yet gentle intervention for all of the females, every, every human that I see in my office because of how they impact the mind and the body and everything physiologically, including hormonal health. So in my article on Rupa Health, I reviewed lavender, clary sage, geranium, and rose and neroli, because those specifically have been shown to modulate estrogen levels. And there's a previous article that I again link to in the video description in my original article is on how essential oils affect several other hormones. And this is testosterone. So some of those hormones that indirectly impact testosterone are sandalwood, clary sage, and rose. Cortisol, lavender is one of my favorites for helping cortisol levels and decreasing those stress to help the body kind of get a better progesterone estrogen balance. Thyroid hormones depends on the underlying conditions, but usually you want to look at things such as modulating blood sugar, cortisol, and estrogen. Those are key players for that. And then oxytocin, clary sage, and the combination of blends have been shown to help with oxytocin release, which is kind of your bonding feel-good hormone. So to sum it all up, these variations in sex hormones that occur during kind of perimenopause are basically any time in your life when your hormones are up and down and up and down, they affect the brain and the mood. And estrogen and progesterone affect neurotransmitters. They affect neurosteroid signaling and overall brain functioning. And this can result in irritability and rage, as well as many other emotional issues. So it's important to understand the underlying mechanisms, use a functional and naturopathic approach that focuses on lifestyle, including balancing stress, the mind-body approaches, um, you know, yoga, meditation, mindfulness, aromatherapy, nutrition, and herbal support to help balance out those hormones and improve brain health and overall mood. So that's my take on perimenopausal rage and some of the emotional ups and downs that can occur with hormonal shifts. I hope it was helpful for you. And I hope that even if you're not a biological female, that you can have some better understanding of how hormones can impact mood for your loved one or for the women in your life. And also, I hope that you will check out some of my additional references and resources that I have available to you on my website, including more about using essential oils for mind-body support. Thank you very much for watching and taking the time to learn more about integrative health and naturopathic and functional medicine. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you again. Make sure you like the video and comment so I can keep producing these for you and know what to keep producing more of. I'll talk to you soon.
Take good care.